Do you think, from what you know now, that the contamination is moving? We know it's moving. Dr. Thomas Sherman is on the hunt for a killer. Here's where the landfill is, where this arrow is. He's heading a task force investigating why several children in the seacoast region of New Hampshire developed a rare cancer called rhabdomyosarcoma, the cancer that took the life of Paul Thomas's 14-year-old son, Sam. It's something missing in your life, and it, it'll always be there. And Paul and his wife, Lynn, say more than two years after Sam's death, questions persist. In your head, you're like, why are there three cases that you can go off at the top of your head in the seacoast area? Why? New Hampshire says it's a cancer cluster, which the Centers for Disease Control defines as a greater than expected number of cancer cases that occurs within a group of people in a geographic area over a period of time. And while that definition may be black and white, it turns out that almost everything else is anything but. State health departments get an average of 1,000 reports of alleged clusters every year. But historically, only a handful are ultimately recognized as true residential cancer clusters. One of those is the 1980s case of Woburn, Massachusetts, a story told by the book and movie A Civil Action. More than 20 cases of leukemia in children were linked to chemical contamination of the water supply, according to epidemiologist Suzanne Condon, who investigated for the state. How hard is it to figure out if something really is a cancer cluster? I've been asked that before, and my standard response is extraordinarily difficult at best. Toms River, New Jersey is another recognized case. But some other notorious incidents, often thought to be cancer clusters, were not. That includes the California events depicted in the movie Aaron Brockovich. Federal officials toured a section of Niagara Falls, New York today, investigating the effects on residents of poisonous chemicals. And the infamous Love Canal case in upstate New York. Investigators have to consider several factors, including how often the cancer occurred, how long it took for it to develop, whether genetics might play a role, and one more thing, chance. It seems like people want to say, it just can't be a coincidence. I think people have a, a hard time understanding that sometimes there are random patterns of disease and things can happen because of chance. So when it comes to the seacoast cancer cluster? I think they have an incredible challenge before them. So this is the main entrance. So far, Dr. Sherman and others are focusing their questions on this old closed landfill, where they say the military and others dump toxic wastes. New Hampshire officials say they have found chemicals used to make commercial products in some wells near the landfill. But they say there's no proof they are linked to the suspected seacoast cancer cluster. So every time we find something, it generates a bunch more questions. And those responsible for the landfill deny there's any connection. But the Thomases still hope for an answer, one that might help save someone else's child. These rare cancers are out there, and I really think that that has to be looked at um, so that Sam's death is not in vain.